Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, procedurally generate, um, I guess, a vertical wall, right? So, uh, in the past two tutorials I've done on procedural generation, it's more of been uh, kind of um, like length and width kind of generation, but now we're going to go vertical. So, uh, you know, getting a little more exciting, I guess. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, in the content browser, I've created a, another little folder called tutorial stuff. Um, it, you don't have to do that. You can put it in the proc gen. It doesn't matter. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and right click and create a blueprint class of type actor. And I'm going to call this BP underscore um, proc gen, or no, I'll just call it BP underscore vertical wall. All right. So we'll open this. And inside right away, you're just going to see you know, this white little ball. Um, and I'm going to get rid of that. And to do that, let's add a scene component, call it root, and drag it and drop it to replace the root. So now it's gone, um, and it just looks a little cleaner. So uh, next, let's go ahead and add another component, and we're going to add an instanced static mesh. And um, basically what that is, is it's just a, it's kind of like a, a copy of an actual static mesh. So it, it's uh, cheaper to render, um, so it can kind of improve performance in like so, some areas of your game. So anyways, um, I'm going to call this wall. All right, compile and save. And now over in the static mesh, we're going to choose our wall. And uh, one thing to note, I am using the starter content. So I have this wall 400 by 300, and that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to use this wall 400 by 300. So there it is. Now, um, just to show you what it looks like, if I add an instance here, you can see you know, there's the wall. That's that's what we're going to be trying to make, except procedurally. All right, so uh, yeah, we can remove that right now, and let's get into the code. So um, where we're going to do everything is in the construction script. So let's go in here, and let's create some variables. So I'm going to create a variable called um, uh, number z. Right. So this be this will represent the number of uh, meshes that we want to have in the z direction. So I'll change that to an integer and make it public so that we can edit it from the you know editor and then we'll add one more called um, mesh height again make that public but this time we're going to make it a float all right and this is going to be the height of our mesh so to find the height of our mesh let's click on our wall instance and then double click to open this up and if you look over here by approx size right you're going to see our our length, our width, and our height. And so this is the value that we want. We want this 300, okay? So we'll go back to the blueprint, click on our mesh height, and set this value to 300. And then we're gonna take our number Z and set it to one, just so we have one mesh uh, automatically. All right, so that's it for the variables. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called a for loop. And a for loop will basically ru run some code for however many times you want it to. So. Um, so we'll drag off, we'll type for loop, all right, for first index we'll say zero, for last index we're going to take our number z, we're going to get it, and we're going to say that number minus one, and then plug in the return value. And this is just to uh, make whatever number we have here uh, kind of work on the same zero, zero based number scale that a for loop uses, uh, so it's more of a, a computer programming technical term or technical thing anyways um, yeah so next what we'll do is off of loop body we'll drag out and we'll say add instance and we'll add an instance of our wall all right alternatively you could drag in the wall drag off and say add instance all right you could do it that way both ways work just fine all right and so now you'll notice that it has this instance transform and basically what that is is it wants us to tell it where to put this instance of our you know of our wall so we'll drag off and we'll say make transform all right and then right now we're only concerned with the location so not the rotation or scale so we'll drag off a of location and we'll say make vector and this is going to get us an x y and z vector um, so we can specify you know the x y and z coordinates of wherever we want to add our instance so this is where our mesh height comes into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our index, whatever number it is, 
or yeah, whatever index it is, and we're going to multiply it by a float, and that float is going to be our mesh height. So we'll take our mesh height, drag it out, and you can drop it right onto uh, this value here. It should hook up. And then take the return value of the multiplication and plug it into our Z, all right? Because we want to be, you know, placing these instances higher and higher in the Z direction, okay? So, um, once we've done that, now we can go look in the viewport, and sure enough, you know, we have one instance, which is great. If I were to click on number Z, change it to two, it should automatically, you know, put a new one up there. And since our wall is 300 units high, and we're adding a new instance, you know, every 300, uh, then it should be placed perfectly on top. All right, but I'm going to leave this back to one. All right, so if we go out, drag this out here, and check it out. And now we can, you know, start increasing this, and it'll procedurally, you know, change based on however many pieces we have. And so, yeah, that's really the basics of, you know, setting it up so it works in the Z direction. Um, I'm going to reset that. And now just to kind of, you know, show you how to get it working, um, you know, with like both horizontal and vertical movement or, yeah, position, um, we'll do that next. So I'm going to actually take this vertical wall. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. And then we'll call this um, just BP underscore, you know, wall just in general. Okay. So we'll open that one up now. And I'm just going to close some of this stuff so I don't have it in our way. All right. Now, in the construction script, we're going to have the same kind of stuff, right? Adding the instance and everything. But now we're going to do another for loop, except for our indices in the x direction. All right. So typically, when you're doing like the, you know, the procedural generation, you're going to want to go from x to y to z. All right. Um, otherwise, you might have some problems. So we'll move the z. All right. And we'll drag off, and we're going to do another for loop. But this time, we want to create a number x variable, and we want to create a mesh length variable. So we'll do that really quick. We'll say number x. That'll be an integer. Make that public as well. And then we're going to make a mesh length. And that'll be a float. All right. So just like how we set this up, um, we're going to take our number x, drag it out, and get it. And then we're going to say minus, so integer minus integer. And then we'll plug this value into the last index. And then for first index, make that 0. All right. Now, um, oh yeah, let's make sure we set the defaults for these. So number x should be 1. And then mesh length will be, um, I already know this, it's 400. But just to show you again where it is, you know, if you go and find your actual mesh, it'll say approx size. And this is our, you know, length, width, and height. So for the length, you know, we want this 400 value. So that's where I'm plugging that in. All right. So now, just like how over here, we multiply the Z by our index, we're going to want to multiply the X by this index. Okay. So we'll drag off of this index. We'll multiply int times float. And now this time we'll take our mesh length, drag it and drop it, and then we'll plug in the return value to our x. All right. So then you know we're making the transform once again and adding an instance at this position. So we'll compile and save. We'll go back out here to the editor, and I'll drag in this wall now. All right, here it is. And if I start um, adding meshes, you know you can see we're going up, but now I can also go out. So let's say four by four, and there we go. So just like that, we've created a wall that goes both up and out. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you know you found this helpful. Um, if you have any more questions on procedural generation, you know definitely feel free to ask. Um, I don't claim to be a genius at it, but um, I guess I know I know a few things. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and like or subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.